Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Metal Wolf Chaos. Uh, Fallout 3 happened and the audio from the last Metal Wolf session got eaten. I figured out why that's happened twice now in two LPs, so it's not going to happen again. I know how to prevent it now, but we've got like an hour of Metal Wolf that we have to redo the commentary for. Mike's not super available today, and I don't want to leave a big gap with no new Metal Wolves. Which is a weird plural. So it's just me today. I'm not trying to Benoit, or I guess the new verb would be Hogan. I'm not going to Hogan Mike. I'm not trying to <laughs> retcon him from the channel or the playthrough. Just this little 20-minute post-commentary episode. We took a little break between the first session that we recorded of Metal Wolf and this one. So I played around and I redid some of the missions before jumping back into the Grand Canyon mission I uh, failed on last time because of uh, the bridge that collapsed. And I did a little bit of grinding to get some money so that we could get some really nice miniguns faster. During that break, I found some really cool stuff out. Uh, first off, yeah, this game is from soft as shit. There were some really fiendishly well-hidden paths with energy pods and hidden weapons and hostages and all sorts of cool stuff. Here, I... Yeah, this, this, this. Mike called this super hard. Uh, in the last few episodes, he kept saying that he thinks that Blaze is a mode you can go into where your blue meter is full and you get to fire all of your weapons, every single one. Like the ones that are stowed away in the shoulder pods simultaneously, and he was 100% on the money with that. I think you do it by clicking both the left and the right analog sticks in when the blue meter at the top right is full. It's absolutely awesome. It's really handy in a couple situations, too. Not sure, I like. I didn't pay too much attention to how quick that fills up, either. Uh, also, occasionally you'll see a little bar to the right, uh, to the left of the reticle that's filling up. That indicates your reload. It's just a little handy tidbit to point out. Uh, so I was saying this game's from soft as hell. And some of the missions I went back to do, I found some really cleverly well-hidden paths. Like in the Alcatraz mission, the timed one. When you start the mission, if you turn around immediately, uh, and you jump the wall over the bombed out house and you fly along the edge of the cliff to the right, you reach a cave that's built into the cliffside as hostages and Mr. President, there's only one target area remaining. At the end, there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't look destructible that you actually can case. blow up, and if you do, it leads to new areas and rooms. Sorry, I didn't want to talk over Jody for a second. You know, the more I listen to her voice, the more she kind of sounds like the uh, the woman who announces the trains coming and going in uh, Central Square and Sonic Adventure. I wonder if it's the same voice actress. Yeah, there are just tons of, of crazy well-hidden paths in this game that we've only kind of scratched the surface of. And almost impossible to find hostages. Like, just happen to look up there and see that. I think there's like one FAQ that I have found for this game. And um, I can confirm that you do get the Moonlight Greatsword if you rescue every single hostage in the game, so there's going to be some uh, some bonus video material after the main playthrough is done, and it doesn't seem like the main playthrough is going to last all that long, to be honest. Um, I think why I kept going into the map was I was trying to find that last target area, because this one was a little bit of a pain to find. Man, it feels weird doing this in post. Never, ever liked doing post-commentary. This is going to be a substantially less hyped up episode than previous ones. I think what I'm considering doing here is jumping off the cliff, but... Yeah, I, that would have been a very, very poor decision. So I think I just wound up having to backtrack like all the way around this winding cliffside through the bridges and the tunnels built into the cliff. Or did I jump down down here? I don't remember. Yeah, go for it, Dave. In the past. Yeah, it's a handy little shortcut. And I missed some hostages. Uh, so instead of trying to remember what I did or predict what I'm going to do, 
there was an interview with Miyazaki this morning, and anytime there's any FromSoft news lately, I'm just like, come on, Metal Wolf! So, yeah, there's Dark Souls 3 tidbits in there, and that's all well and good. And then they start asking him about mech games and, like, sci-fi games. And Miyazaki goes, yeah, I really want to do something like that. And he goes on to say that they're working on launching a bunch of new projects, like, simultaneously, soon. And that just opened the floodgates for me to go, I want all the things! That was really scary. I thought I fell off the cliff for a second. Actually, I want two things. I want science fiction Dark Souls in space. Like, I want Dead Space Souls or Event Horizon Souls. But now that Miyazaki's talking about wanting to do a mech game, I want Metal Wolf Chaos 2, damn it, bundled with the original. I want it so bad. And it's not going to happen. Like, don't get your hopes up just because <laughs> I'm saying that. Or that you're reading that. The enemy has been oh, annihilated. Hold on. I'll resume that after this cutscene. Peace will be brought to Arizona. War really doesn't suit these lovely surroundings. Jody. Nor someone as lovely as you. Sure, whatever. <laughs> this work, Mr. President. Yeah, even hearing it twice it still makes me laugh. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad this game has that feel. It's fucking lovely. I love this game. Uh, I earned a new weapon. I still am not quite sure about some of these hostages. We did confirm that rescuing um, the POWs with the guitars gives you new background music Jody, to play in the menus. What's the situation on the ground across America? In the West, areas where the army is pulling out are on the rise. But across the nation, the situation isn't so good. Don't worry. I'll free the whole land soon enough. A whole land. <laughs> Any email from the resistance? Yes, there is. The man's voice is as cool as ever. Wow. Jody's got a thing for the, uh, the resistance, man. Metal Wolf, thank you. Our membership is steadily on the rise. More reliable, trustworthy sympathizers have joined our fight to revolt. The day will come soon. When we're ready to rise up, I'll be sure and let you know. The Resistance leader sure is standing tough, isn't he? Tough as nails. <sighs> now I'll head out to liberate the West. They kind of go all fanboy for the Resistance leader, who I I still am calling that it's going to be Richard Hawk, and it's either a trap or he or like he's organizing his own resistance. The enemy force is apparently carrying out covert military campaigns based in a ghost town in the Phoenix suburbs. Yes, yeah, so we're heading to Phoenix, Arizona. The radar jamming facility for their secret defense is set up in the town. Metal Wolf's radar could be jammed. We spend a lot of time in Arizona in this game. Please destroy all target areas in the above ground buildings to knock out the radar jamming and avoid surprise attacks from the enemy. This mission goes by the call name. Oh, here we go. My darling Clementine operation. <laughs> uh, it's not as good as Operation Blood and Gunpowder Smoke. Or Operation Bring Fashion Back to the Streets. Good luck, and Godspeed, Mr. President. I don't think anything is going to top those. Uh, so we're heading to a big, uh, old western-style ghost town in Phoenix. But before we do that, we have to develop some tech. And I went to the wrong thing. Although that's something I should probably start looking at from now on, the mission data prior to starting. Uh, so we head over to the machine guns and we upgrade that science some more and it's now maxed out as you can see and I still have plenty of presidential points which is your currency by the way uh, and we picked out some ferocious mini guns I believe it was this one the one with the 3000 ammo 
We just did a little bit of uh, comparisons to the other. It do It's not quite the highest damage minigun, I don't think. I think it's barely a little bit weaker than the highest damage one. Attack rating of 580, but it has the most ammo by far. And it's also an energy minigun. Yeah, it does about 120 less than, uh, I think, the GGRH. Yep. I'm not sure what energy rate means. I don't know if that's, like, the rate at which it generates energy for your blaze move, or if it's something else, or if it's, like, a damage modifier because it's an energy weapon. Um, either way. There was a little bit of indecision, a little bit of time spent comparing, but ultimately I wound up manufacturing two of those shiny chrome MG200s. Yep, and I had enough left over to build a second one, so I could dual wield these. Mike was thinking that these were probably like the flamethrower and they were uh, two-handed so you couldn't dual wield them. Nope, totally dual wieldable. It's the sickest. Probably should have checked that out before making two of them. That would have been the prudent thing to do. But I think my, my line of reasoning with not bothering to check it out before I spent the money to build two was that even if they were two-handed, I could just equip two of them and take up four weapon slots and I would just get double the ammo. So I would have 6,000 shots as opposed to just 3,000 for the cost of two uh, weapon slots. And, oh man, I don't remember what tree we started down. Yeah, obviously bazookas. Had to be bazookas. So, uh, now that we have machine guns maxed out, we're gonna be taking the bazooka tree to its limit. Uh, if you notice, there was a minigun that was not unlocked. It was the final in that tree, and I guess it's hidden somewhere in the stages. Either that, or it's um, a mission reward. I read on the, the GameFAQs post that if you get an S rank in certain things, you can unlock new weapons. So there are other unlock conditions for certain weapons and items and stuff. All I'm concerned about, really, though, is the Moonlight Greatsword. <laughs> I want to see how that works out in uh, a mech game because it's a big particle cannon in armored core so I don't know if it's gonna be like that like it's a big glowing teal chest beam or something in this or if it's an actual saber all on like zone of the enders or something oh we were interested in the rail guns too I think we played around with the rail guns in the upcoming mission, just a little bit though. Um, I still have to, to kind of play around with them on my own and see if I can make them work, because uh, we used the rail guns a little bit in this mission, but not too often. Also, I believe, yeah, that's the RG30, I think that's the rail gun. Uh, so it is, it, it does take up uh, two weapon slots, I think. This place it's a two-hander. Like a town in an old western. A radar jamming station is located here. The number of target areas and enemies seem limited. Let's mop this area up ASAP. Jody, sorry, but these guys might slow me down. Huh? Major, M Michael Wilson. You've tarnished the good name of the U.S. military and your reputation as a hero. And now you'll die for it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is like starring in John Ford's My Darling Clementine. Wanna find out who gets to play Wyatt Earp? Okay, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Posing as a hero in an old western is fine, but So I think they just blew now, the hostage car up. High ground? R no, okay. But if you're if you're too slow, you can't destroy uh, the cage that the hostages are in and uh, rescue them. So you have to restart the mission if you're not like immediate on those reactions. That's a radar jamming installation. The best medicine for that kind of headache is pumping it full of a heavy dose of lead. God. Oh, I love this game so much. Uh, so, man, the sound effects they make when they cloak are the worst. 
function of the enemy's heavy special mobile armor is knocked out. Now that's refreshing. So those radar jamming towers uh, prevent you from seeing... Oop, I hit it with the railgun. And the railgun... It's not a uh, light armament. So it, it'll kill the hostages. So you have to go around this level destroying the uh, jamming tower so that you can actually see those mechs and as you can see they tear you up if you're if you allow them to gang up on you and you don't take them out one by one that happens they're really really nasty major i'll be the one to mark your graves oh i accidentally skipped that uh, I was saying before, none of those new projects are even going to be tangential, tangentially blah, related to Metal Wolf. Like, put a bullet in that hype right now. I'm not saying I wouldn't play a Miyazaki Armored Core. Hell, I would love to have just, like, a good Armored Core again after the embarrassing shit show that 5 was. But From is a rich library of mech games, and all I'm saying is fuck Murakumo and Chrome Hounds. Give me more Metal Wolf Chaos and H.R. Geiger Souls. Jesus, Mechanized Christ. All they have to do is vaguely hint at it, and I'll have my full, undivided attention. Uh, so at this point, we put the railguns away. And pulled out the heavy machinery. <laughs> These sick chrome miniguns! Uh, and you're gonna see... They tear through everything like tissue paper. No more stomp attacks needed. I mean, I'll, I'm sure I'll do that from time to time to conserve ammo, but like... Energy minigun, freeze scientist, no problem. Terrorist towers up, and you're gonna see what these things do to those cloaked uh, big mechs. Like, you can see the little shimmer of it. Look at that. Oh my god, it's so nasty. Uh, if you can't tell, I've really fallen for this game. I'm so happy it's more than just a joke and some really bad voice acting. I was down to take that ride, even if it was, but it's such a pleasant surprise to discover that it's actually a completely competent game, and that it's, like, it's a little bit faster and more loose than what I'm used to with FromSoft mech games. It's not as fluid and weightless feeling as uh, Zone of the Enders, so it strikes this really nice balance. It's very arcadey, and there's not the insane depth of customization like Armored Core, where you, where you can kind of feel, like, paralyzed by your options. But at the same time, the garage in uh, Metal Wolf gives you just enough to think about. It's like a really sweet dessert this game is. Not something that you can eat all the time, not something that you would only want in lieu of other food types. But every now and then it just hits the spot. Wow, what a terrible metaphor. Fuck that. Uh, how stupid! <laughs> Enemy special mobile armor units have been put six feet under, Town Marshal. Yeah, I totally adore this How game. It oh, it's to so be good. An old West hero. Not too good. I'm not the hero type. What? That doesn't make any sense. I'm just doing my job as president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna do it for now. Next time we'll have Mike back. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.